Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 25th of September. I joked with my students, only three months till Christmas. And they said, do we have to do this, do we have to read this book, do we have to do this work until Christmas? I said, yeah, of course, that's what I meant. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers on the 25th of September, uh, 2013. And um, this is yet another informal kind of get-together um, inviting some folks who uh, have been involved with Youth Voices and talking about whatever comes up for us um, and kind of meeting each other. Um, as we have been paying attention to the news and so forth, uh, there have been floods in Colorado too, where, and, and in fact, Monica Hardy, who's one of the co hosts here, and she usually pops in, I don't know if she will tonight. Um, I have been in touch with her, and she's been reassuring me that she's okay. But we'd love to hear more of what's going on. Um, so Monica got um, Haley. Um, Haley, say your last name and introduce yourself a bit. So we're going to start there by, with, with a report from Colorado, if we can, and then we'll move out from there. Introduce Great. yourself, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, I'm Haley Sladek. Um, I can hear myself talking, so I don't know if uh, I might, I might have to pausing. Do you have the broadcast on somewhere? If, if it's playing at the same time, I don't know why it would do that. Anyway, I, I'll just okay. talk, and if I talk at a weird pace, that's why. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, I work at the Patchwork School in Louisville, Colorado, um, and I'm a Colorado native. And um, the flooding has um, had a huge impact on our community and my family in particular. Um, my family is um, from Loveland, and they've been there for a hundred years. And there's this canyon up there called the Big Thompson Canyon, and um, it had flooded 50 years ago. And my mom um, and some of my cousins and my grandparents were in that as well. Um, I lost an uncle to, in that flood, and um, anyway, they decided to build after that um, because we were so connected to the place. Um, and this flood that just happened um, basically wiped away all of our family property and places that I grew up playing in the river and um, my two <laughs> my my entire family was stuck up there for um, like three days and I didn't have any communication with them um, two of them. I have a brother, two brothers. <laughs> One is um, was with my grandma at my mom's house, and my other brother and my mom were up at. Um, actually, hold on. I'm gonna... Yeah. There you go. Um, I, I think that's help me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that was really okay. hard. Um, so they were split up during that whole thing, and. Um, they, they, can you guys hear me? We can hear you fine. Can, can you check? So did you ever turn the broadcast on anywhere? What? Maybe it's playing in the background? No, I can hear you repeating as well. Uh -huh. Okay. If everybody has headphones or earbuds, that usually solves yeah, some issues. She took it off. So. Let me try one thing. Sorry. Okay, try now. Okay, try now. Nope. Well, go ahead. I don't know where it's coming from. Can't okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, so I, um, sorry, there were two, they were separated. And um, so I had two, pe four people of my closest people <laughs> completely in communication with me for 48 hours, or for, 48 hours solid. There was a day where I had communication with them. One was at an evacuation site that they had to make. Um, yeah, hopefully she will come back. Karen, I, I found the feedback on yours for some reason, but when I muted you, it went off. But just to say, but um, gosh, this is terrible to ha have the story interrupted this way. Um. Am I still here? I am, right? Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So we'll just wait for a second until everyone gets back. 
and we're good. Haley, are you still there? Okay. Sorry, folks. Hmm. Let's, uh, we're a little technical difficulty. We are working on it. I don't know what we're doing, but <laughs> we're waiting. <laughs> There, she's back. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's and cool. I didn't Welcome. realize that I had dropped the connection until after I... <laughs> so you were saying... <laughs> okay, go ahead. You were saying that you were cut off for 48 hours from your family. Yeah, so I was cut off from for, for 48 hours from them. Um, the only thing that I could be doing was watching the news media, you know, like media coverage of everything. And um, because Boulder... I live in Longmont, which is really close to Boulder, um, and that had a lot more media attention on it. And uh, with that, the only thing that I could be doing was poring over the news, and there wasn't any... <laughs> they, were, they weren't focusing on the big Thompson Canyon up north. And so um, the last I had heard from them was my brother saying something like, I'm getting really scared, and, you know, it's uh, midnight, and they're releasing more water um, from a dam, so it wasn't break. <laughs> um, wow. And so I had all this knowledge of, like, you know, how narrow the canyons are and how exactly, you know, which building these two, my two family members were in and where they were in this other one. And um, it was, like, the most awful thing I'd ever gone through. And um, I ended up, the thing that I want to share with you guys is that um, one of the only ways that I could cope was be online and talking with people and saying, I reached, I wrote, a letter to everybody expressing kind of the situation and what I knew um, and asked them to forward information to me up from the media and um, that they about the big Thompson Canyon um, and also to pressure new like local media sources to cover that area more and it was amazing the silver lining of this whole, <laughs> this super destructive thing is that you know hundreds of people from all over the country were like watching the news and helping me out and try to piece together the information. Um, and uh, so anyway, uh, that was one silver lining piece of the whole thing. And then um, I, uh, the first piece of information I heard that my family was okay after those 48 hours was from a man who was flying out in a helicopter um, and he had his, uh, wife in there with him and he he said like your brother's okay and um, he I wanted to let you know he's the bravest man I know because he, he ended up saving this this um, couple's life he like went into raging waters and got them out and um uh, anyway so there, there's like and after they all got out one a group was choppered out another group was um, ATV'd out by my cousins <laughs> who were on the, like, on a safe part of Loveland and they heard that, you know, some of our, my grandma and um, their parents weren't going to be evac for five to seven days. And so um, two of them are fighter fighters and they ended up evacing. They, as civilians, <laughs> um, got an ATV company to donate ATVs so that they could basically go in and evacuate the, my family and they ended up evacuating you know 50 people <laughs> you know who, who had heard that they were doing that over the course of two days um, so you know there have been civilians who have been helping out with the disaster relief and especially in those like three days um, or those four I the time is weird for me but um, in those four days there were there was a lot of stories of you know, people helping each other, and, you know, my brother came out of there saying that, um, you know, the community that him and my other family members and neighbors and stuff um, was huge. You know, they helped save this this couple and keep this, this woman had completely broken her legs, uh, or her leg, and they were um, doing uh, medical stuff with her for, like, overnight, and you know, like they had a campfire to like keep spirits up during this whole thing. And um, anyway, um, uh, sorry, sorry, I got distracted. Um, so there was some silver lining to the whole thing. Um, 
Uh, let's see, as far as from a school perspective, um, I've been hearing a lot about, about um, we just keep on hearing stories of destruction everywhere. People's lost their homes, loved ones, and um, I, and the, the patchwork community, the school that I teach at, has been super supportive of my family and others in particular. And um, the, I don't know if it's like kind of the undertones of the school or whatnot, but we have, they've done a lot of self-organizing of like, okay, this person needs this, this person needs that. Okay, here's a resource for you. How can we help, you know, Haley's family and that sort of thing? So in that way, um, so that's another piece that's happening. Um, and then uh, another final piece is that um, at a, at, as a school, um, we took a couple days where it was, uh, we changed the typical school day up so that it was um, focused more on the whole community. So parents, teachers, staff members, who anybody who can make it, kids came and um, basically we worked as a community to like walk through processing, beginning to process some of the trauma behind it um, because my family, you know, they saw people die and um, anyway, some really awful things and also trying to figure out how to support young children in all this, you know, of like how do we support kids who might not have been directly affected by the floods but have, can feel, you know, the tension in the area um, and how do you process intense events when you're exposed to something so, um, you know, life-altering potentially. So um, that's kind of an update. Uh, yeah, there's that's, a lot there. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know about that word, kind of. That was a very touching and wonderful update. Thank you. Um, but, uh, other people have questions, thoughts? Um, to f feedback to Haley. And I'm sorry if you came here to talk about youth voices and we jumped you into this, but <laughs> well, actually, it well, does yeah, remind me of other kind of tragedies that we've seen through the years. And Paul, you kind of alluded to when uh, the BP oil, uh, the Deep Horizon, um, blew in the Gulf area. Um, that you know, a lot of people, the students in those schools, I think uh, it was really important for them to like you're talking about, Haley, part of processing it, I think, is letting, you know, writing about it and um, let let others your age kind of know about it. Because, see, my students, I live in Utah, right next door, but mine are really far removed from those things. And, and I think it's really important for students to tell their version of events um, and be heard. Uh, and the same thing, Paul, if you remember in um, when they... Uh, Fukushima, uh, the mm -hmm. the reactor blew. We were working with a teacher who was in uh, school in Tokyo, and it was a similar kind of thing. Like just the outpouring of story is is really important. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts about that? I mean, and and you know, I, the the other thing is, I I there have been so many experiences like this um, that are somehow related to, I mean, I, I think it's hard not to say they're, I think we have to say they are related to environmental issues on some level, like the BP oil spill is obviously different than um, what's, what's happened in Colorado. But, that, but I think there, we can make some connections um, <laughs> if we can. Um, but so, so that I think we're all shifting to, um, like, we're just waiting for it to happen here again, wherever we are, right? Um, and, and knowing how to respond and so forth is important. Um, I, I, Monica, um, why don't you check in, if you don't mind, and tell us how you are and what you've been thinking? I'm good. Um, I just threw in... Um, Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry. Ignore that last thing. I'll get it. I'm looking yep. for the article uh, that they wrote up about Haley's brother. Mm -hmm. um, What's his name? His name is Wesley Sladek. Okay. So we'll find it. Well, so, I just okay. found it on her page. So give me. Okay. go ahead and talk. Give me one more second because it's right in front of me. <laughs> okay. 
So other people have joined us. Kieran, do you want to say hello? Hi. Okay. In introduce yourself briefly. I'm Kieran. I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School in Manhattan, and Great. I'm teaching English ninth and tenth grade right now. I'm teaching a course on memoir um, writing and um, literature analysis. And um, last semester, I taught a course on um, epic heroes. And uh, we had one of Karen's students with us in the Youth Voices Summer Program, Eva. But um, and she was wonderful. And and one of the things that your students are kind of exemplars on, if I could say, is their responses to literature um, on Youth Voices have been kind of amazing. So. Just mention that, and we want to find out what else you're planning to do. Maria Lamb is with us. Do you want to introduce yourself, Maria? Hi, I'm Maria. I teach at Sunset Park High School, 11th grade English. I only have two minutes of battery. <laughs> well, I guess that was all. <laughs> I, maybe she'll be back. We'll see. Okay, and Grafina, do you want to introduce yourself? Whoops, Graffina, you got to unmute. I muted you earlier. Uh, okay, back and forth. Monica, are you ready to say hello again? Sure. Um, I did okay. get it in there, so um, somebody that's a little handier than me, if you want to throw it in the um, at tech We'll figure talk. it out. Yep. Okay. Um, I just, you know, you, you're always impressed with the kindness that people show, you know, and. We've seen so much going on away, far away, you know, other countries, and I think it, it's really impactful. And the question that was thrown out there to um, Haley from the chat, um, if she used any online tools to help coordinate, and I'd like her to share that. I have, if she doesn't share this part, I'll share it, but I'd like her to go ahead and share that. Now Haley's uh, muted. Haley, you need to unmute. Sorry, That's sorry. Okay. I'm still learning. Obviously, yeah. um, <laughs> so uh, I only, I personally only use Facebook and Google Docs. But um, I'm trying to look up the name of a friend of mine used a tool to do a mass outreach to media, and I'm trying to find find the name of it. Okay. I'll add that that alone, though, is so powerful because, I mean, it did at times really seemed like it what you were in someone else's story because here's Haley calling out to people on Facebook to get a helicopter to her brother you know and at first it's it's like it just seems weird and I know other people live like that all the time but and then the other thing that um, you know I wasn't we were we're in a safe little pocket so I was very lucky I mean Loveland was hit hard but we were in a safe part so I mean, we were without water for maybe six hours, big, big whoop. <laughs> but yeah. the mental aspect mm -hmm. of a lot of the stuff, you know, knowing people um, that didn't fare so well, and then the helicopters, that also made me think of, you know, places that Jeremy Scahill writes about um, in Dirty Wars and the helicopters that are always overhead in other places they're not there to come rescue you and they're not there to make sure you're okay or to bring you stuff so it was just hearing those helicopters every day was just that was a different experience for me so other thoughts Do people want to jump in well, um, uh, go ahead, Chris. Do you well, I was system? wondering um, for Haley is and Monica too. I guess is school back to normal now, and and how are kids? How's the day to day thing? <laughs> Do you want to go first, Monica? Well, you know, kids are so resilient, um, and I I think we were just out a couple days, um, maybe a, maybe five. Um, I know Longmont was out more, um, but I don't have any more to add to that. How about you, Haley? Yeah, um, we were, Boulder Valley School District was out for Thursday, Friday, and then Monday, Tuesday, and still there are places that, depending on the location, haven't opened up yet, but Patchwork got started back up the Wednesday 
after it happened. Um, I actually didn't go back until this week, and I'm still going back part-time um, just because of the fact that <laughs> my entire family is now displaced, and uh, we're trying to figure out housing, and, you know, does everybody have fresh underwear, and, like, uh, you know, dogs, and um, so, uh, yeah. So, and for, as far as from the kids' perspective, um, they are back to normal, and I agree that they're resilient. I do think that there's been a lot of um, play and conversations around the flooding, um, especially with the younger children. You, we've been seeing a lot of um, not obvious play about flooding, but it was obvious to us, <laughs> you know, that it was about processing this event. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Can you so I'm not sure how to make this transition, and there doesn't have to be much of a transition, because um, as other thoughts, um, Hillary and Monica, come up as we're talking, please keep sharing um, as, as we go. Um, but um, why don't we, part of what we wanted to do tonight was introduce some folks who will hopefully be using Youth Voices, and Joanna? Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us where you hail from and what you're hoping to do and with your students this year, this semester on Youth Voices. Let's jump in like that if we can. Ask them if we can hear you. And please keep interrupting each other as we go here. Okay. Joanna, are you? Yep, good. We hear oh, you. Great. I'm Joanne Betcher. I teach in Bayview Middle School, 8th grade English Language Arts. Um, I came across Youth Voices in a magazine I was reading called Avatar Generation. I don't know if anybody's familiar, but they had an article about Youth Voices. I'm and subscribing right away. I didn't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it was May last spring I read about it. Fair enough. And we are in our first year of issuing iPads to all our students, um, K-8, and the high school has all Macs. So we're really working on... Um, trying to integrate technology using the SAMR model where we're reaching beyond the walls and having other teachers involved with their kids and other students and Youth Voice this seems like a really good uh, fit for that for my kids to be able to talk to others. What is SAMR? What is, I don't know the, um, what does that it, stand it, for? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. We're seeing it's okay. a lot. But it's more, you know, you're taking a task and at its highest level you are either creating projects and they are um, reaching beyond in the classroom. I'll come back next week with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. So you have now, what, about 110 of your students on. Where, where have you started with them? How have you started? Well, I have your link. So I think almost all my students have created their bio. Mm -hmm. They're recording their video of reading their bio. And, oh, really? Fun. Yep, working on their avatar and the 10 self and world questions. Very cool. So I really am just curious about how others use it after that. Mm -hmm. mm, Maria's back. Okay. That, yeah, I, I, one of the questions I thought to bring tonight, and I'm just going to mute Maria. When you uh, get on, you'll unmute, which is fine. I think that's where the sound is coming from. So, so I one <laughs> at lunch today, I, I, a teacher who's a new teacher and is trying to get his in my own school is trying to get his students on his voices. Asked the same question. He said, "So okay, so they respond to a couple of posts. They get their their bio done. Then what?" <laughs> What's next, he said. So I, I I think that would be a really nice question to be asking each other, like what's next um, as you proceed on Youth Voices and how the platform might support what you're doing. And um, so who wants to jump in on that question? Is that fair? Chris, do you want to talk about what your students have started doing a little bit? Sure. Yeah, so, you know, like um, everybody else, or a lot of people, I suppose, we started with some questions, and then it was just like a day where they um, came up with a question, and then I said, you go search wherever you search for information, however you search for information, uh, find, you know, read something about your question, 
compose some sort of answer and link to a source that you found. And so another day we're going to talk about how we find information and how we go about searching, which leads to another sequence of finding information in a lot of different places. Um, but then what we did today was we focused more on um, finding other people who share interests on the site. So we did the thing that we talked about last week, I think. I adapted the idea um, where we all set our question to each other and then we tried to categorize those questions to see if we could find um, you know, linkages in the room. And of course some people did, but not many people did. So then we searched for uh, similar terms, just using the search on the site, and people found some other students that way. And then um, the other thing that I just did was I put together my school page for the site. So if you go to youthvoices.net slash judge, which is my school, that's my students there. So okay. now I'm starting to think about how we can um, connect with other students in the community. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, in the Youth Voices community. Right, so I mean, so, so I, I did notice some of your kids, like the determination one, for example, uh, one of your students was really interested in something written by a student la in the spring um, at Green Dot. And that teacher may or may not still have that student kind of thing. Right. So there is that issue. Um, yeah, we, but, we talked about yeah. recency as far as searching people out, too. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't stop someone from commenting on some ones that may, you know, may not um, still be in the community. Um, I think that's fine, yeah, but yeah, sure. Yeah. That's right. Um, but then another step we'll do will be um, to look at the people who've commented on my students and connect that way, too. So not necessarily through subject, but through people linkages. Mm -hmm. so, Does anyone use the peer to peer university? Um, and by that you mean all the curriculum that we put up there or right. something else? Yeah. yeah, like have the kids work through that grid? Well, I certainly have um, and, and I do it more than others do so happy to talk about that. But um, the, what I can say, well, wh I, tell me more about what you think about the grid and what you're thinking <laughs> when you look at it and, and think about the curriculum that's there. I mean, I, I just thought it was a, it was very structured with the, mm -hmm. um, the, the reading strand and the citing of evidence strand and that the kids could work at their own pace and go through that grid and it kind of led to step by step. But I wasn't quite sure how to manage that. Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have in your classes? I see uh, 107 within the day. Uh -huh. In one day? Right. So how long do you have each period? Well, 52 minutes. Oh, okay. That's a lot of kids, though. <laughs> Not too bad. We're lucky, we're lucky you're here tonight. We know how to But... Yeah, so that is the intention of the grid, and Grafina is somebody who this summer looked at the grid and said, I, I need to kind of um, alter this and make my, you know, make it, ch change it around in some ways, and uh, is Karen still here? Yeah, Karen's still here. Karen is uh, somebody who uh, can speak more eloquently than I can about open source, but one of the big ideas I think of that it, with open source is that um, you want to look at the grid and say this works but this part doesn't work and I need to rearrange it like this and, and kind of make it your own I think a little bit. Having said that if you want to just jump in and use it the way it's set up you're welcome to but so those are just some thoughts that I don't know if that's helpful or not. Okay. I can say that I, I'm moving from teaching like seniors or kids who should have been out of school for a while, um, to teaching sixth graders who are overage, um, and and I'm having to rethink you know some of the expectations. But the whole idea is is exactly what you said that that in an English class I think 
but I think also in other classes, you want to have all, all sorts of literacies going on. So you want kids responding to each other. You want them reading books. You want them doing research. You want them generating text. You want them doing, mm -hmm. like, controlling self-directed learning kind of thing. So those are kind of the big themes. And then trying to break that down and say, so that it's clear to them how it all fits together, um, and you can hand that out to kids and say, "Okay, this is this is our this is what we're doing." What ends up happening when you do that is the learning becomes more asynchronous. Kids are all over the place. Um, there are many fewer kind of teacher-led lessons. Um, mm -hmm. So when you say, "How do you manage it?" That's that's believe it or not one of the ways. <laughs> it's to let asynchronous learning happen and, and just have kids track where they are in the process. All, all that feels very abstract. It's not abstract at all. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. So any thoughts about that? Was that any kind of answer to you, Joe? Oh, um, it, yeah. it'll help. I'll listen to okay. others and hear how they use it. And like I said, we just got started. So mm -hmm. we'll, the kids will probably lead the way. <laughs> Absolutely, and there's no way to get it wrong either. You know, I mean, you, the way you do it will will make it work. I well, think. I'm wondering what Grafina has to say. You mentioned that mm -hmm. she kind of looked at it this summer. Um, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, great! <laughs> and you're on an iP iPad, right? Yes. There you go, Joanne. See, they work. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think that. It can it, it it can work, but like I said, I needed to modify it a little bit for my students. But I'm thinking of um, again using portions of the grid, like Paul said, and having my students work through certain pieces. But I'm also looking at another um, um, curriculum, which is called Real Deal Scenarios, where you actually they. These are teens that produce films talking about social issues. And I'm thinking of using that as the motivator to get my students thinking about what they want to research and look more further into. Because um, I, I, eventually I want to move into video documentary because I really like that. But um, I think these, these films, getting them to think about screenwriting and being able to post some of their stuff on Youth Voices, as well as like as a motivation to get them thinking about what they would like to research and and you know what they would like to investigate more freely would work for them. Mm -hmm. So they need some type of guidance in the beginning, but I think once they get a hang of it, everything will just start to fall into place. Mm -hmm. okay. So Folks, help me guide this conversation because <laughs> I want to hear what you're thinking. Uh, and and as we're doing that, could could we ask Marina to jump in, say hello, and tell us where how your fourth graders are doing? No, oh. no, you're not talking yet. You oh. need to unmute somehow. There you. Go. I was so frankly. Am I unmuted? Yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. They're great. Like, I'm, we're not on the computers yet at all, so we're not, like, blogging, we're not on Youth Voices, but um, I've established some communication with my tech person to figure out how we can set up, like, I guess, email addresses for them so that they can get on Youth Voices, because I know that's part of it. Um, but we're laying, like, the groundwork for inquiry work just every day. I'm introducing, like, little snippets of things and um, through social studies, through science, through what we're reading in reading workshop and they have a lot of interests that I can't completely indulge and I want to be able to teach them how to indulge in them themselves and this is the perfect way to do it once I get it on. <laughs> I, I love that motto, indulging students interests. <laughs> That's, what do you mean you can't indulge all of them? Why not? Because I would never teach those things that I have to teach, you know? But um, they, they have so much to say, and they have so many interests. Like, in terms of social studies today, their curriculum involves New York State um, history. Mm -hmm. And right now we're talking about the geography 
combined with the Native Americans. So today we talked about the flora and the fauna, and it started to lead to like, hey, did you guys know that there have been coyote sightings in New York City? And they went like wild over that. They wanted to know like, what parks and are they at our parks? And um, then I said, well, it's extra homework. You guys can look up some stuff. And they were like, oh, I'm going home and looking this up, and I'm going to talk to my mom about this. And they were really interested. So I know that there's and and that has that's connected to their curriculum, but in no way, shape, or form is that like laid out in a lesson that I have to do. They kind of just planted it and they went with it. So I like that kind of stuff. Cool. So it's going to be one of those search and rescue. Maria, can you jump in? You you uh, in an email recently to me said that you don't have computers yet either, but you. Kind of similar to what Marina just said, uh, are laying the groundwork. How is that looking? Yeah, we started the year with um, 10 self, 10 world questions, um, and I showed them the Youth Voices site, and it was funny because I said, choose three students from this site that you want to see their 10, world, 10 self, 10 world questions, and they actually chose Mario, Hamilton, and Eva. They looked at their questions, and then I did a little twist on it because we're mainly focusing on power, um, in the curriculum, so we had them. I had them kind of group the questions uh, to see how power exists in their questions. That's and a good question. they kind of made a power poster um, from magazines and quotes and anything that they could find. Can you give and, an example though? Uh, yeah. Huh? Like, what's a question, and how did they find power in that question? Well, they came up with like the strangest questions. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, offhand, I really can't remember because okay. right now I'm a little. <laughs> As you do, you might remember. Go ahead. Yeah, yes. maybe I'll remember. Um, I'm trying to think, and then and then um, kind of similar to how we were finding articles, I just had them look oh, through um, magazines and newspapers. And I said, just find something that interests you over the summer. I didn't care what it was. And then I had them find power within the current events. So it was kind of inquiry-based. But I, I couldn't have them set up anything online yet. And we did a whole um, piece on immigration, um, whether it's worth the risk in our American Studies class. And I showed them Mario's piece today. So Mario is a, a young man who, who published a piece about his it's his immigration story. He also published quite a bit of poetry and so forth this summer. Mm -hmm. And then um, through the Hive uh, day just last night, um, his that piece was was published on Huffington Post. So that was kind of exciting, and we're all sort of thrilled about that. But um, so. So just to identify that, um, that's who Mario is. And, and some of the, Grafina, Maria, and uh, Marina were teachers in the summer program, so that's how we all kind of know each other. Karen, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're thinking of, and will Youth Voices be part of that in some way, or what do you think? I'm... Um I'm going and by the way, I want to say, could I just say, Karen and I helped start a, a school many years ago. It's embarrassing, yeah. right now. not really. But anyway, and, and worked in a school for a dozen years, and it was a school that I think both of us think was was amazing in that in the freedoms it gave teachers and students in lots of ways. So yeah. I can just say, that. hi, Karen. <laughs> um, and it was amazing working with you. Um. So I'm, uh, I'm going to have kids, uh, I'm going to continue having my kids uh, um, block, use responses as a reading block, as a block for their um, uh, aesthetic and analytical response to what they're reading. Um, Last year it was primarily their independent reading. This year it's going to be their independent reading, but also their um, uh, reading in in literature circle. So I want to um, I want to I need advice on how to have them um, talking to each other about the book that they're reading. So I'm teaching. Um, uh, so, inventing the truth, the art and craft of writing memoir. Hmm. And so let's say a bunch of, like, five kids might choose to read um, 
Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Another five might choose to read um, James McBride, The Color of Water. So they're reading, and I want them to talk about what they're reading. And so I saw on Youth Voices um, that people were using that other site. What was it called? Um, Peer to Peer University? It's, uh, was it in P2P? Um, but what was it? Yeah. Um, okay, there was one case where they made a voice threat where they were all mm -hmm. talking, but then... Um, uh, but there's lots of media you can include in. K K Karen, could I um, ask you? Um, you? You also have kids using Goodreads? As yeah. well this year. Yeah. So how does how does using how do you use Goodreads and and then how how does that interface with Youth Voices? So Goodreads is um, really exciting for having. So I'm having them curate lists, um, and it, it's exciting for them to um, be recommending. It's a way that they end up recommending books to each other. It's a way that um, they um, identify as readers, as you know, m members of that club um, that John Smith talks about. Um, it's a way. Um, it's a short skip and a jump to from Goodreads to the New York City, the NYPL website where they can order books online and then go pick them up at their library. Mm -hmm. um, it's... Uh, so a lot of cool things up there. Um, also, I have, I have them um, try to think of all the books they ever read or were read by somebody else and um, have them go into the dates read column and fill it out so then they come out with a portrait of themselves as a reader and then it's easier for them to reflect um, to do some memoir writing on their experience as readers um, when they have at hand the the image of the cat in the hat and also their classmates exclamations oh I read that book so then there it makes um, um, like a um, I gotta say, I, I I love I love Google Plus because uh, just when you said that, the, our fourth grade teacher smiled and her <laughs> smile came up, which was which was cute. Anyway, just to say, but Karen, can I interrupt just to say that um, one of the, so there there are embeds you can use, and we I did experiment with it um, last year um, to think about it with you. Yeah. Um, there um, there was another teacher who's using Goodreads as well. I forget. That teacher, anyway, um, and 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 so, if kids can, part of their profile could be to embed that list of books they've read on mm. their profile, mm. um, and so when you publish something on Youth Voices, then you could kind of see both. Um, so using both would be a nice thing to do. It seems to me, um, you're using it in really interesting ways. But from a writing perspective, do they write reviews of books on Goodreads, and then? How can Youth Voices be a place where, I, I'm, and I'm saying this gently, but the, the, when kids write about books, they often do, um, or we set it up that way. I don't know what it is, but they, they sound like book reports too fast. Yeah. And how do we make them conversational and interesting? Yeah. There were three questions there. But it's somehow, like, do kids read on Goodreads, and then what kind of writing do we want to see on Youth Voices that will be interesting Personal, but still about books. Yeah, that's your like assignment. The, what do you? <laughs> go ahead, Karen. I like the um, the idea of Im embedding the link to Goodreads. That's great. Um, uh, the um, I like the I use the templates so much. Um, and you you gave yeah. us new templates too. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I am concerned that it um, that it doesn't give kids enough uh, a voice of their own. I'm so not. One, I'm not, not. By the way, no. <laughs> I you know I mean it's so easy to say you know 
you now you've used the template. Next time you know what we want you to do. Now go do it. Yeah. I think I, I actually think it's it's it, it's what instead what it does is it makes explicit our expectations and it, mm -hmm. and it gives them new new ways to think about their work. Um, yeah. So and and as long as you treat it with the attitude of, which I just did, which is, you know, okay. You know, you want we want you to quote from the book, but you don't have to do it the way that paragraph did it. Do it, do it your own way. But yeah. still, that that important point of we want you to quote from the book is is being explicit about our expectations. I think. Sorry. Um, yeah. You know that. Um, and, uh, and by the way, on youthvoices.net, there's a tab for guides, and there are maybe fifty of them yeah. there now. But go ahead. Yeah. Chris, was it you who made um uh, made that um who was it that made the guide? For uh, Chris did for comments. Comments as a genre. Uh huh. That is what I want now to add um, to the guides uh, for literary response. Literature response. Um. Uh. Response. Literature response as a genre. Um. Not necessarily um, in the slide formation that you used, Chris, but um, a list of. Like a checklist of a, of a few things we want you to quote from the book. We want you to. I got I got to argue with you a little bit though, because I'm going to say I think those lists and and I love Chris, but I I find that thing abstract, um, and and I find the guides more more concrete, and I think kids need concrete, mm -hmm. clear examples, and rubrics and 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 lists and so forth. I I I think are really abstract, and then they have to translate, do a lot of translate. Yeah. But well, me, yeah, and it depends see. on the kids, though, right? I mean, because yeah, my know. kids, you know, they really, uh, they they got the guides, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they were like, this is really constraining me. You know, they had some issues with it. So I, I kind of abstracted it uh, with my audience in mind, you know. Sure. So back to Paul's question, how do we help the kids? How do we make it so the kids are... Um, bouncing out into writing that uh, has their voice, or or that they have ownership of. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so you were just reposing the question. You weren't answering it. Come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody else want to jump in on this question? Because well, I, I think I think we I think we got it. let me repose it this way I think we on youth voices and if you haven't heard this yet we we kind of have it you know we're always getting better but we per, personal inquiry and starting with your own questions and developing um, texts over time and 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 all of that I think we have down and Karen there's lots of room for memoir too there is a whole channel for. You know our own stories, for example, and Mario's story is a memoir, by the way, the one we've been talking about, Nino. Um, but, but anyway, but but I think where we get kind of stuck is is when we have kids write about books, and every once in a while, a kid's independent reading book comes into that like that inquiry that is it's like a, a spring coming up for kids, but not enough, and so I'd like to marry those more. And it is yeah. about kids owning books. It's about kids, um, and then wanting to talk about books to other kids. So that was I a. Like, go I ahead. Like Who wants to jump in? Grafina, go ahead. I I like it when they actually try to pitch the book to other students, mm -hmm. and they create that um that little blog or or just like how they they put that thing on the back of the book that makes you interested in it. But yeah. when they're able to do that, the, um. As a way of um, like pitching it to their to their fellow peers to make them interested in actually reading the book, I find that to be interesting. Certainly have the audience there. Yeah, that's true. I'm I'm hoping in youth voices that when they write about a book or have a book response, that they'll connect with other kids that may be interested in the same genre. And they'll have like real conversations back and forth, um, and they'll connect with kids that like the same topics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, 
I think that will happen. <laughs> um, we we always have to massage it and make sure you know they're they're going to miss things and we'll say, did you see? Just like I did, you know, Mario's thing is a, a memoir. Go check that out. But yeah. yeah, helping helping each other make those connections are important. Um, Aaliyah, did you want to check in? Hi, um, I've been trying to get on for You're like on. the past <laughs> for about like an hour. And, well, I'm um, glad we were able to help you with this. No, I, heard of, sorry. I heard most of I'm, what was said, yeah. but I just didn't hear everything and wasn't able to connect all the dots. So um, uh, part of what tonight's show is about is introducing ourselves, so you can uh, do that. And then tell us um, what you're thinking about Youth Voices at this point. Okay. So, <clears throat> one, my name is Aliyah Hayes, and I work for New Visions Charter High School for the Humanities too. And um, I'm a 10th grade English teacher. It's, it's in the Bronx. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the ways that I wanted to use Youth Voices, but I haven't gotten there yet just because of the logistics, is um, I wanted to have my students publish their This I Believe essays on the website. Um, another, I'm not sure about all of the ways I can use it, but I'm, I'm thinking about that, and I'm also thinking about <laughs> I'm sorry, I see Grafina's daughter. I wanted to say see hi. See <laughs> How are you? Hi. Good. I miss you guys. I miss you too. Um, so as I was so saying... Ju just, sorry, just to say, Talia was with us in the summertime, and she is now at Kieran's school. But uh, Go ahead. And Alia was with us. So. I go ahead. think it was her. Hey, yes, I believe. Hey. <laughs> I Well, okay, I was about to go off track, but yes, my students have already written them, they've already published them, and we have like um, Google documents of them, so that when we do have the time to publish them on Youth Voices, we'll be able to do that. I got the um, template that you shared with me for them to put down like their passwords and all of that, so I just have to figure out how I'm going to get that done, but that's next. <laughs> Um, okay, and and by the way, I don't think she's on the call right now, but she's probably hanging out somewhere nearby. Um, Karen Fastenpower, who is um, is is going to help us with that. So, um, yeah. So okay. if, if feel free to ask for help, and, and we'll get help for you. Okay. And Chris no, Sloan might be able to help. I was just trying to think too. of how like I could pass yeah. a sign around, I mean like a note around, like write down your name and your password. It just seemed involved and I just, did, just didn't have time to do it, but I definitely want to make time for it. So I, could, could we spend, I know, and we're like at the end of this, but or, mm -hmm. but could we spend a little time, because I, I don't know how many teachers might get stuck at that point, and that, that would be a real shame mm -hmm. for that to happen. So please email me and we'll make that happen. It's not as automated as it should be. But can it be something where there's like um, maybe um, a generic password and then when they get on they can change it to something else if they choose to? Because I feel like that might make it a little bit easier. That is possible. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. However, okay. <laughs> um, my experience has been if you don't use a, a comp, like a, one that they use all the time somewhere else, they tend to forget those passwords and it becomes a pain. I agree. But I agree. I, so just... Think about that just from a practical point. Of view. Okay. Did, did, does your school? I thought you had uh, Google Docs, though. We do, I mean, and Google. and they have them. They have them published on Google Docs. It's just a matter of taking the time to publish they, them on Youth Voices. No, no, but I mean, are, so they are they using the the uh, Google email? Oh yeah, yeah, they are. So you have email for them, and and they should use the same password mm -hmm. on Youth Voices as they use there. Okay, it's just a matter of work? having them all write it down. Yeah, it definitely right. works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to speak to, I think Karen was talking a bit about um, having her kids read different books at the same time. And I feel like she said she needed help with something, and I think I might be able to help. So I just wanted to know, like, in what way were you thinking of using them? Because I'm actually embarking on literature circles now, and it's been a lot of fun, kind of, <laughs> but we're, we're just in the beginning stages of it, but th it took a lot of, like, um, front-loading. So if you um, want to talk about it or need someone to help plan them with, please contact me about it. I would love to talk Wh where's to Where's your school, if I, if I can ask? It's, it's one and this is, by the way, Jake Jacobs, um, our, the famous art teacher who's collecting art teachers from around the world. Anyway, oh, oh. Hi, Jake. <laughs> at least around <laughs> Canada and the United States. 
My school is actually um, in the South Bronx in, in Samuel Gomper's building. Mm -hmm. um, on, I don't know if this means anything so, to you, but it's on 147th and like Southern Boulevard. Okay. We can make the connections. Um, Karen is starting. You you were, you mentioned um, literature groups as well, right, Karen? Or literature circles of some sort. Karen. 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 I meant to say yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, so and what grades are you teaching? Ninth and tenth. And Aaliyah, what grades are you teaching? Tenth. Oh. Tenth. So mm -hmm. that would be really interesting if. Um, Somehow those literature circles could circle with each other. I don't know how. Yeah, I mean the possibilities yeah. seem like if the kids were willing that we could actually videotape them mm. and like use them to help either other students or other teachers. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's what we've been doing. <clears throat> oh. Mm -hmm. And I thought I had an original idea. You do. <laughs> yeah, that's always an idea. That's fine. Well, we just kind of started, but. Uh, so but yeah, so I, so how did and I I feel the rush of the hour here. But how um, how do you decide what books to read? And is there any way that um, you know the kids on 14th Street and kids on 147th Street could be reading the same books? Um, well, for us, um, the books. So for example, we've been talking a bit about human rights and then I scaled it down a little bit to talk about civil rights. So all of the books that we're reading or that are offered in the liter literature circle have to do with either civil rights or the Jim Crow era. So for example, we have To Kill a Mockingbird, we have The Help, we have Warriors Don't Cry, we have Malcolm X, and we have The Secret Life of Bees. So, there so you is, have sets of those books available. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so they'll join a group who's reading the same book as they are. And then everybody has a role. So everybody has to come. This is the part that hasn't happened yet, and we're like right on the verge of it, like literally tomorrow. Everybody has to come in having done their part for their role. So like if you're a connector, then you're making all the types of text connections that you could make. If you are like the questioner, then you are thinking of questions that um, other people might have, questions that you had as you read, and you're also coming in with your answers to those questions. And there's like an illustrator, and that person might take a scene and like illustrate that scene. Um, but there are six different roles that a person could have. I could go are, on and on. <laughs> no, it's okay. Are these themes at all related to their personal inquiry, too, or have you started um, that? Well, I guess to an extent, like, I kind of have to streamline what they're, the areas that they're going into. So, for example, I might bring up a topic, but let them figure out what they want to research on it. So, for example, like us talking about human rights. Sorry, that's my clock. <laughs> okay. Um it's a I was good talking, about, <laughs> I was talking yes. about human rights. Like I wanted to narrow it down to like one group that everybody would have in common, so that we can all have a similar story. Um, but in addition to that, in addition to them reading about civil rights and the Jim Crow era, they're also going to have a chance to research any human rights issues that they want. Okay. Um, yeah. So could I just say there, there's a teacher in Queens um, who a, a Reed's teacher um, mm -hmm. uh, who is teaching 11th graders, um, Christy Kingham, and her first assignment, is, well, her second assignment, is to do this, I believe, also. So mm -hmm. it's like, um, I mean, that's really what Youth Voices needs to be about. Kids need to be able to to see connections and the themes and so forth. So I was going to ask you for a second mm -hmm. that. Like our, what were, did doing this, I believe, help you find interests kids have? And are those interests connected to the rest of your class at this point? I won't say that they helped me find their interests, but they mm -hmm. did like alert me to some things. Like for example, like while I'm thinking that they might tell a story about how they triumphed over something and now they have this new belief, some of them might say things like, um, you know, I trusted somebody 
and that person hurt me and I learned not to trust anymore. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like letting them have that voice and say what it is they need to say, but then how do I guide them to say like, well, maybe the lesson is not to trust as easily and to just be careful and look for warning signs, you know? Like I don't know how to get them there yet. Well, Karen, sorry, I, I need we need to finish here, and so just to respect our time. But if is there anybody who wants to jump in and say we have to talk about this again? Why don't we <laughs> at least do that? But Karen, do you have anything? You've been listening to everything. Do you have anything you'd like to summarize or add? Could we ask you to do that, or whatever you're thinking? <laughs> and at least, Karen, I'm going to say one more thing. Are you? Can you talk, Karen? Can't hear I you. I believe yet. so. There you go. So I, Karen and I had also, in a quick email, said that um, we sh or should at least say something, and um, that's about all we're going to do. Um, that next month, the month of October is Connected Educators Month, and I want to go way back to the floods in Colorado. And I've been thinking that you know what? If connected doesn't mean connected to the earth. Um, then we're kind of missing something there. But uh, so let me just add that. But obviously, uh, you guys are here because you're all ed connected educators already um, and becoming more connected. So we want to help make that happen as much as possible. So I, I'm going to say that, and I don't know, you know, more what to say. Karen, you have any thoughts about any of that? <laughs> Well, I have thoughts going back to a different discussion, which is about management issues on youth voices. Mm -hmm. And we're sort of chatting about that in the uh, Etherpad. And just, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if people might be interested in a future show on that. Because I think, like, I know that getting the usernames and passwords and stuff is challenging. And I, like, there's some things that I've done in the past that maybe could make that easier. It would be great to trade ideas. And certainly, again, for everybody, I'm really available to help enter students or set up school pages or help with any of that management stuff because I, I hate to see that I know that's like a big task to get that done and I hate to see that get in the way of all the good work you're all doing but yeah. it I mean it has to be done so I don't know if it's a future show or more discussions there are some good resources on the also on P2PU in addition to the grid stuff there's a teacher group that's just sort of the youth voices how you can do this, right. yeah. And Karen, what we can say that, that seemed to work with, with you, Joan, right, is that we sent Joan a um, in in um, Milwaukee. What? I'm saying the wrong in Wisconsin. I apologize. <laughs> it's all up there. So anyway, no. The, um, sorry. The uh, we sent we sent her a um, a Google spreadsheet with you know with first name, yeah. password, email address. Is that what we need? I think um, we can, and then and then she got that filled in and sent it back to us. I I put it in, but Karen might have done it done it if I didn't have time. And then Karen set up the the school page. And so Chris and others who have been with us a long time, um, if you can help us and help a neighbor do that, um, that would be a great thing to do. So that's one very practical. It's not a whole show, but thing we can do, we can set up a, a, a spreadsheet and you can send us all that stuff. Having said that, you can go ahead and enter your own students. It is possible to do um, and we can support you in that. I but, thought having a spreadsheet was so simple. Mm -hmm. um, I would For you it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, so right. So that should not get in the way. That's absolutely true. And it is on our list of development. Um, but we're way into that. Um, who else would like to, uh, anybody want to jump in and say, please address this next month during Connect? Like, what do you want to talk about if we have another show where Youth Voices gets together again? Let's just go a quick round like that, and then we'll finish. Very quickly, though, please. Chris, do you have a thought? Uh, well, I mean, I think that a lot of these ideas are um, really good, but what happens sometimes is, like, my students aren't always on the site, you know, so, like, there'll be a week or so in between our access to um, hardware. And um, so sometimes it helps to, like, Paul sometimes will say, hey, check out this student's post, or, you know, right now we're working on this kind of thing, and, and I'm... 
Paul, I know you're always on me to kind of try to communicate better, um, you know, what we're working on right now. Um, but, you know, making that easy for everybody to see, I think, is is a challenge because we're all doing these really great things in the classroom, but then um, we don't always know that those are going on um, other than seeing posts from the classes, you know. One very, and missions is a whole other show too, but the um, one very quick idea on that though, Tommy Bateau, who is from Colorado, and I saw him try to get in here tonight, so I don't know if he's hanging around somewhere, but what he started to do was was post at the bottom of his school page, where all the students are, start to post um, the, the projects and assignments that he's working on, so that's mm -hmm. one perhaps way to do that too, but I won't have a comment on everybody, I promise. Grafina. Do you have oh, any thoughts uh, as we go here? This is really like um, modifying the grid, <laughs> <laughs> which we're supposed to get in contact with each other. So do it, and then we'll look at it. I'm good. <laughs> OK. <laughs> okay. I'll but show you my way... modification. I'm, I'm in the middle of it, so yeah, yeah. But is there a way to, um, do I have to create a whole new grid, or do, or can I just modify what you already have? You, can, I'll send you, and I'll make available on the site a, a template that people can mess with. Okay, thank yep. you. Jake, you have any thoughts? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, you know, I was really interested in um, hearing uh, what Aaliyah was talking about um, and having her kids um, re really research these, um, you know, these uh, civil rights events through literature. And um, you know, I'd like to get my kids more aware of that. I think I think they're younger, but um, you know, making art around you know the things that older kids can teach us. So I'd definitely like to set up skyping or uh, Google Hangouts um, like we did uh, last week. So um, I'd, I'd maybe uh, just yeah. to, just to tell the story. Jake tried to uh, Skype with someone in Iowa, and their first time, or actually Google use use a Hangout, I should say. Um, and you guys were um, time zone challenged <laughs> for the first time. But that happens almost every time for the first time. Don't give up. Keep going. Um, yeah, and si connecting um, visually is an important thing to do. Joan. Um, I'm just looking forward to learning about youth voices and how to navigate around it and helping my students do the same. So, kind of like the next step, what do you do after you set everything up? And so, could I say, I mean, a, a next step and an ongoing step, right, right. Is, is, is commenting. I mean, we have learned many, many times that commenting is essential. So, finding something on the site that you think is important and then using whatever guides uh, your kids are comfortable with or you think are useful um, for comments is is really the first place to start. And then today I had my first student's comments, um, one that I thought was really good and one that was really interesting but not quite there yet, you know, and we talked about what is a good comment. So just just using commenting as a place to, to teach writing, um, to teach how to, you know, how to interact with other people online is, is a really important thing to start with. Um, so that's one thing to do. And and it doesn't end, you know, you want to keep that coming and going. Yeah. Kieran, sorry. But Joan, thanks for joining our community and thanks for jumping in. Karen, did you want to say something? Yeah. You had your hand up, I saw that. <laughs> Two things. I'm next, right? <laughs> um, one is I am making notes on the pad about sort of all of these, they're not really all logistics and management, but a lot of these topics could fit together in the future. And with regards to Connected Educator Month, I would like to talk about how to get teachers we all work with who are not connected to be a part of this, because I just feel like this is such a um, enriching things for teachers to participate in connecting, and so many teachers are, just don't have access to it for whatever reason. Cool. Karen, final thoughts. I want to um, I want to do the this I believe project, um, and 
Yeah, possibly start by having my kids read Elias students this, I believe. If they're and up. The, there, and there that are sounds, whole sets great. of whole sets of other students as well. But yeah, that would be great connecting with current old super. And, and if I you go into have... missions, there yeah. is um, I think Tommy Bateau put up um, uh, this, I believe, yeah. assignment as he interprets it. And then NCT has a lot of stuff there, and NPR. But, no shortage. I, I, I went based on what I saw on NPR. Mm -hmm. So I also want to have my. Um, I'm going to have us read. I know why the cage bird sings, and I'm wondering if that might um, connect with what you're doing, Alia, in the. Um, I think it would. I think that that's something else that I could have added to this lit circle. To be honest. Mm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And then. Also, I want to um, figure out how I'm going to have kids who are reading the same book talk to each other on using youth voices um, about their book, which seems pretty elemental. Oh. What form should the conversation have? Mm -hmm. And then finally, how to have their the writing that they're doing about their books be m m more subjective and authentic. So, one, of the, one of the ways we could start on that, by the way, yeah. as a community, is collect and curate some really good student writing about books. Like, if, if you have some good th that is like you just described, you know, authentic, real ownership but about books, that would be a great thing to share. Send it to me, and we'll kind of share it out to the community and, and start thinking about so we need some mentor text, I guess is another word to call that, um, around around this. But, yeah. Um, I know I have some. Great. So let's 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 start that way if we could. And Karen, I'll I'll show you the technical thing about getting the Goodreads in. Um, maybe okay. yeah, that's, and that's that's easy to do. There's some choices to make about what goes in. But Maria, thanks for staying up with us. Um, <laughs> sorry. Maria said this is past her bedtime, and then we went late, so I'm sorry. Maria, any last thoughts, though? Um, I'm still interested in signing up my students for the literary magazine um, so that they could do some inquiry and searching on the website and then creating their own articles and posting them at some point. And I'm still trying to work out the P2P grammar badges because I made them, but oh, yeah, yeah, my kids yeah. haven't been able to sign up for them yet because we don't have access. But you don't have access to P2P. You, oh, to computers. To computers. Yeah, so let's end on that note. You're a blended learning school, right? And you don't have computers. I know. I uh, just, yeah. never mind. <laughs> I'm waiting for them but, eagerly. I'm ready. And um, <laughs> I've al I also showed them how to use Crocodoc, and I'm really interested in that because we've been doing lots of resource annotating. Um, I mean, annotating on resources, but I'd like for them to use it online. So some kids have brought in their own laptops already, and I have showed them how to use it, and they love it. Cool. So. Yeah, I, I hope that goes on the list, Karen. Karen, um, like uh, looking into Crocodile and, and sharing resources there would be great. And Marina, you have any last thoughts? Um. Yeah. So I'm just at that point where I really, really desperately want to get my kids on. So. Um, kind of like pursuing my tech person to help me with that and um, I'm definitely gonna like kick off their experience on youth voices with the letter to the mayor campaign which we've kind of been planning the seeds for because we have like a written Twitter board so they had to hashtag mayor please listen and this is gonna connect with um, Jake a little bit because a lot of my kids are wondering where arts and music are in their life and in their schooling and they're very very interested in that whereas last year I had a lot of kids who fell into more of a category with the libraries and budget cuts so um, I don't know if that's for in terms of connected educators month like mm -hmm. connecting with the arts and art teachers and, and people involved with arts I would really like that for my kids and, and for me because I love that stuff too um, yeah, that's it.
Cool. Thank you for sharing so much. Lots of ideas tonight, and we will get back to this, I promise. Um, I want to leave you go so that you and, and by the way, if you if you've been hanging out and wanting to go, it's not rude to leave. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I should have said that earlier. But uh, so thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, it's inspiring to talk to all of you. Um, this uh, webcast has been broadcast over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. And um, and that was uh, in, put together by Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier several years ago. And you can find this at teachersteachingteachers.org and at edtechtalk.com. Um, thank you all, and we'll see you again soon. Good night. 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 Thank you. Good night.